commercio estero di acciaio è stato il protagonista dell'International Steel Trade Day organizzato nei giorni scorsi a Francoforte da STSG Steel Trading Study Group. L'evento ha offerto una panoramica a 360 gradi sull'attuale situazione del commercio internazionale di acciaio partendo dai casi antidumping aperti in Europa e negli Stati Uniti. A fornire il quadro europeo è Yuri Rudyuk, partner dello studio Van Baele Bellis di Bruxelles. In the EU we have two very important cases concerning steel ongoing at the moment, concerning stainless steel and uh, grain oriented electrical steel. The cases have just recently been initiated and we see a lot of attention of the steel traders to these cases. Steel products have been historically one of the targets of anti-dumping actions uh, in the EU and we now see that two cases ongoing uh, concerning steel products, that's quite a significant uh, uh, number already. At the same time, we have seen uh, in 2013 only one case uh, ongoing, so we see that there is a certain trend in increasing of number of cases in the EU concerning steel imports. Richard Chris, Executive Director dell'American Institute for International Steel Trade, invece offre una panoramica sulla situazione americana. And the United States um, continues to be the most heavily affected uh, industry um, by uh, anti-dumping and countervailing duty actions. Uh, if you look at the Commerce Department statistics, um, there, there are more anti-dumping duties, uh, anti-dumping orders and countervailing duty orders in effect um, for the steel industry uh, than for any other industry. Ma quali sono, visto anche l'inasprirsi di queste misure, le prospettive per il commercio internazionale di acciaio? Risponde Roland Dorn dell'RVE Institute. As the growth of world economy is slowing and uh, steel is a rather growth sensitive product and so my forecast would be that we will get a certain pickup in steel trade but we will, won't come back to the rates we experienced in the last decade. So it will be at a lower pace so the steel market it will grow at rates around 3 and 4 percent and steel trade will have a similar rate. Quale sarà l'impatto delle importazioni cinesi in Europa? As it's difficult to say what the Chinese imports will be because they are highly dependent on political measures. Uh, there is a high pressure in China to export because there are idle capacities, uh, but in the end the volumes will be still rather small, we will see here in the European market. Non solo la politica e il mercato determinano la direzione e il flusso dell'export, a volte essi sono decisi anche dai conflitti come sta accadendo in Ucraina. Becker, membro del board del tubificio ucraino Interpipe, ha aggiornato il pubblico sull'attuale situazione del paese. La situazione situation uh, is of course affecting, I mean, uh, scrap collection in the eastern region between Donetsk and Lugansk is difficult, of course, uh, due to the fact that the war situation um, is blocking logistics and the availability of scrap. In general, for the export situation, I don't see any changes as of the current situation because the idle assets in these regions are not working anyway, so it will be, if the crisis will not be extended beyond um, the borders which we have today, uh, will not influence uh, the share of export of steels um, in the Ukraine. Dati i difficili rapporti russo-ucraini, quali dovranno essere le strategie future dei produttori di acciaio in Ucraina? All Ukrainian steel producers uh, must refocus their strategies to global markets away from uh, Russia CIS due to the fact that uh, competitive uh, environment in Russia and in the CIS states uh, based on over capacities which have been installed due to the local consumptions forecast are completely um, in another situation right now so uh, negatively influenced by the economy and its development and also by the recent investments um, which is not necessarily connected with the Ukrainian crisis, um, they have to further boost export to global markets.